Hello, physios, welcome to the modern day classroom. Today we will study muscle anatomy and physiology. Before we start, let's understand why you should study muscle anatomy and physiology. Well, the answer is simple. If you understand the normal structure and function of a muscle, it'll be easy to understand its pathological changes. Pathological changes are usually seen after an injury or disease. With that in mind, let's have a look at basic skeletal muscle anatomy and physiology. Let's look at the structure first. We'll look at muscle structure from the outside in so that it'll be easy for you to understand. As shown in this picture, all muscles of our body have three connective tissue layers on the outside. Let's have a look at each and we'll also see what roles they play when you're contracting a muscle. If you were to dissect a muscle, you'll first come across epimysium, the outermost layer. It's thin and its function is to keep each muscle separate from the adjacent muscle. Once you dissect epimysium, you'll see bundles of threads, each wrapped in a connective sheath. These bundles are fasciculi and the connective sheath is paramysium. The function of the paramysium is to keep one fascicle separate from another. Let's take a closer look at fasciculi under a microscope to study them further. Here you would see the individual muscle fibers, each of which is what we call a muscle cell. A muscle cell has many nucleases. It has same organelles as other cells like lysosomes and mitochondria. Endomysium surrounds a muscle cell. It is the innermost covering of a muscle, and its function is to separate a muscle fiber from its adjacent. So, to recap, bundles of myofibrils form a fascicle, and many fascicles form a muscle. One question remains, what is a muscle cell composed of, i.e., what structures are found in a muscle cell? Let's go into some more details about the structure of a muscle cell. For ease, Let's divide a muscle cell into two sections. 1. Non-contractile units or structural proteins and 2. Contractile units. Let's talk about the non-contractile section first. Plasma lemma. Under the endomysium, plasma membrane surrounds each individual muscle fiber. This plasma membrane is plasma lemma. Some books refer to it as sarcolemma. At the end of each muscle, plasma lemma fuses with tendon. This means that every fiber connects with the tendon. This arrangement helps your body to move. A muscle contracts and its tendon transfers muscular force to bone and motion occurs. Now, you might wonder what makes plasma lemma unique? There are folds present beneath the plasma lemma that make it unique. These folds perform two primary functions. One, they keep plasma lemma intact when a muscle stretches. Two, they assist in transmission of action potential from neuron to muscle fiber. Satellite cells. These cells are present beneath plasma lemma. Their function is growth and development of a skeletal muscle. They also assist muscles adaptation from injury immobilization, and training. Sarcoplasm. Sarcoplasm, it's a muscle cytoplasm. It is a gelatin-like substance. Sarcoplasm fills the spaces within and between the myofibrils or contractile units. Sarcoplasm contains more glycogen and oxygen binding myoglobin, which is like hemoglobin of RBC. Transverse tubules or T-tubules is a network of tubes which runs vertically along the surface of a myofibril. Their function is transmission of action potential from plasma lemma to myofibril's interior. It also passes nutrients and takes the waste products out. Sarcoplasmic reticulum. This reticulum is a longitudinal network of tubules. Its function is to store calcium that is necessary for a muscle to contract. We'll discuss more about it in the next video. To recap, non-contractile units of a myofibril are plasma lemma, satellite cells, sarcoplasm, T-tubules and sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, let's talk about the contractile proteins. Myofibrils. Each muscle has thousands of myofibrils. 
Each myofibril has basic units called sarcomere. When a myofibril is kept under an electron microscope, you'll see sarcomeres lined up one after the other. But what is a sarcomere made of? Let's have a look, shall we? Sarcomere let's look from outside in. It does seem confusing and too much, but you'll only have to remember five terminologies. Let's begin. The border of a sarcomere joins two sarcomeres and appears to be zigzag line. We will call this a Z-disc or Z-line. Sarcomere has a unique striped appearance, i.e., it has alternative light and dark areas. These light and dark areas are because of dark and light band found in the sarcomere. A band is formed by the entire length of the thick filaments and a small part of the thin filament. In the middle of the A band, we only find dark or thick bands and hence we call it the H zone. There is a dark line running through the middle of H zone known as M line. H zone and M line are only visible when the sarcomere relaxes. The areas that include only thin filaments or are light areas are I bands. There are structural and non-contractile proteins in the sarcomere as well. The most important of them all are titan and nebulin. Titan attaches the thick band to the Z line and nebulin stabilizes the position of actin. These proteins are also called parallel elastic components. Parallel because they lie parallelly to thin and thick filaments. Elastic because nebulin and elastin along with epimysium and paramysium are responsible for muscles' flexibility. Thick and thin filaments are one of the sole reasons our muscles contract. These filaments have proteins arranged into a characteristic arrangement. Let's dissect them. Thick filament. About two-thirds of a skeletal muscle is myosin. It is the principal protein of the thick filament. One myosin molecule has two protein chains. These chains twist around each other. One end of each strand folds to form a globular head, or as some of the textbooks say, myosin head. These heads protrude from baseline of thick filament to form cross bridges with actin. Cross bridges are part of process of muscle contraction. Thin filament is actin filament. Individual actin molecules are spherical or globular proteins. These molecules join to form actin filament like pearls in a necklace. It has two more proteins that help in muscle contraction. These are tropomyosin and troponin. Tropomyosin is a tube-shaped protein twisted around actin. Troponin is a round-shaped protein attached at intervals to actin and tropomyosin. Troponin and tropomyosin, along with calcium start a muscle's contraction and relax it. We will discuss it in the next video. That's all for today. In the next video, we'll talk about how a muscle contracts aka its physiology. Until then, drop your questions in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe. Share this video with your colleagues and classmates. Thank you for watching.